want a full disclaimer here is that Ryan Pohl said he is not going to be busy in free agency. So Bears fans are so used to Ryan Pace signing everyone and their mother, including guys that retired five years ago, <laughs> Jason Peters. Um, I think that everyone is so bent out of shape right now in the Chicago Bears universe right now. So just a full disclaimer. It's okay. Tony and I are here to say it's okay. There is still time to sign people. And there's an NFL draft coming up with the Bears have six round, six picks in this draft. So Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody, joined alongside 007 Tony Sapita. Bears clearly still have a need at offensive line, and there are a few names out there still that no one's talking about. And yes, their names aren't Ryan Bates because Ryan Bates is staying in Buffalo. So just throw that out the window. I love that everyone was like acting like Michael Jordan retired again when we lost <laughs> Ryan Bates. Like it, it's just relax. It's okay. He started four games. He could be a great lineman, but he wanted to come to Chicago. Anyway, Tony, missing out on Ryan Bates sucks, but what's next? Yeah, so I, you're right, you are right. We're acting like Ryan Bates is about to be the greatest offensive lineman of all time. I was very excited for him. I, it was a really good, I think it was just would have been a good signing, in my opinion, with his age and with, you know, we're, we're kind of getting him on the come up so he wouldn't be too expensive. So that was kind of why that all sucked. But I mean, I'm not going to, not going to lose too much sleep over it because, I still trust Ryan Poles. So we may have to shift our strategy to drafting an offensive lineman early now. I know what they were saying that, I mean, me, obviously a Bears insider, and other people were saying that uh, Christian Watson was being rumored at 39. So we'll see if that continues or not. Uh, but if Poles and Eberflus, like the guys that were about to list below or someone else, you know, maybe they could replace that bait signing and they could still take Christian Watson at 39. So another disclaimer, I know Nick already gave one here. I'm going to give one as well. A lot of these guys could be great depth guys. So they may not be starters and we may still sign them without the expectation that they're going to be fantastic, like, you know, 10 years starting right guards. So that being said, I say we get right into it, Nick. Uh, so my first guy, we're just going to basically talk about a couple of guys that we think can kind of fill this role or potentially even just be good depth. So Daryl Williams, offensive guard. 29 years old, so a little on the older side, 6'6", 330 pounds. He's a big old boy, big and mean. And I know, again, we've talked about this over and over. It's not necessarily Poles' preferred size, maybe, but... Too big. You know, we're, For once, we're kinda, it's too big. Yeah, we're kind of getting down to crunch time here. So, I mean, I, if we can really be like, oh, he's a little too big, but he's good. Like, just, just sign the guy, make it work. Giant guy for a guard, but we still like it. Uh, would be a huge body that could take on those large interior defensive tackles. Uh, his 2021 stats include 11,000 or uh, 1,100, 11,000 would be crazy amount of snaps, 1,172 <laughs> snaps, six penalties, 0.005%. Not, not 0. 0.005 times, whatever, I don't know, whatever it is. That's percent. That That's how many times he got penalized. That's nothing. So four sacks allowed. 0.003% of the time he gave up a sack. Again, that is nothing. That's incredible. So PFF grade of 67, uh, 67.5, which isn't horrible, but I don't know what they're grading it based on because those are two pretty amazing stats we just gave you. And I don't know, there's not too much else you can mess up enough to bring your grade down, but whatever. Uh, so not the best, but the, this could allow the Bears to draft someone to sit behind them for a year, um, even maybe fill in at the end of the year, whatever ends up happening. Uh, younger than a lot of the free agent linemen left still on the older side, but Nick, I love the guy you're about to talk about love. Yeah. Well, you know, one more thing about Williams is that he comes from a successful Buffalo bills line who played with Ryan Bates. And, you know, I think Bates is actually the replacement for uh, Daryl. He's a huge guard. He's a huge <laughs> guard. And I mean, six, six, three thirty doesn't get much bigger than that. And if you look at how he's built, he's not totally like a typical lineman. He is a little bit more on the lean side, and that's what Poles wants. But again, Poles wants like small, fast, athletic linemen, <laughs> which I think you need at least one big guy on the line. So mm -hmm. my next pick, and my pick uh, out of the two, Tony and I are doing two eats today, is Eric Flowers. Offensive, just lineman as a whole. This guy could play everywhere but center practically. 27 years old, so he's in within that age range. 6'6", 330. So he's the exact same size as Williams, just two years younger. He had a 72 PFF grade, and that's considered very good. 
That is very good for a lineman. Again, five points higher, but that's a significant difference still. Uh, he's another big, mean dude, and exactly what Matt Eberflus wants in his offense, who he announced today while he was talking to a few Bears uh, reporters earlier today. Would likely kick Larry Borum and Tevin Jenkins into the guard position, which is okay, because I could see this guy being more of a tackle. But if they keep him at guard, by all means, that's okay. I think that'd be kind of cool if you had a bigger guard than your tackle, because then, you know, when you're just bulldozing up the middle with Lucas Patrick and, you know, Flowers and Montgomery, like it's just a match made in heaven. And the Bears are going to be playing with a fullback this year just to get everyone excited. Mm -hmm. So I think Borum likely will go to guard over Jenkins because Jenkins truly is just a mean, mugging, like looking tackle. So just putting that out there. Also, congrats to him on getting engaged. Um, And then just want to put his stats into perspective. He only gave up six stats. He had over 1,100 snaps as well, so almost nearly the same percentage as Williams. He only had two penalties out of every, and he played every single offensive snap for the Washington Commanders last year. Just putting that out there, he is a yep. very impressive football player. He is, and penalties kill the Bears. And I, and some teams actually go, wow, two penalties on the guy, that's a lot. For the Bears, that is like absolutely nothing. Go talk to Charles Leno Jr. who gets like 25 a year. Oh, wait, he's on the Commanders, so he would probably know best. Um, penalties again are the silent killer of the Chicago bears during the Matt Nagy era. And that's just because of his weird snap counts, his weird plays. I I don't even want to know just all the miscommunication, but again, flowers is in the prime of his career. You know, 26 to 30 is in my opinion, the best years for any offensive lineman because they're at their biggest. If they've made it that far, their bodies are going to allow them to play that long. So sign him to a two-year contract, get the best out of him. And then next year you have a first round pick, go out and draft the next guard tackle that's going to take over for him. But I would love this guy to come to Chicago Bears. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you. I, that's that stat's incredible. Two penalties the whole season. We get two penalties a drive. I think is uh, probably what we were averaging. Something so, like that. Yeah. So uh, my second guy, third overall guy, we're going to talk about here is Ethan. I think I'm going to nail this last name. Pochich. I'm going to say it like Pulisic. Pochich. Po- I'm going to go po- Pocket, but pocket, you, you know what? Po- We're saying chich. there's all three. So you guys have all three <laughs> options out there of what it could be. And if someone says that it, we're all still wrong, then that's just another, that's just another episode of just another year Chicago with the pronunciation. But anyway, <laughs> Tony, go on. I'll do a correction video on Twitter. If someone could properly correct me, I, I will. So he is uh, listed as a center. Typically um, he is someone I think that could move around a little bit, but he, he is listed as a center. He's four. Uh, he played for the Seahawks. Uh, this past year, 26 years old, 6'6". Six, six. So we're going really tall here, by the way, for, for building this line. 6'6", six, six, 320 pounds. So again, a bigger guy here. Now, some people may be going, myself included, when I kind of started, you know, do a little research. Some people may be going, who? Uh, well, he is kind of a big sleeper. So this would be great for Chicago, both big, literally and figuratively. Uh, Pro Football Focus has, a, uh, has him rated 67.3. Lucas Patrick had a 57.2 rating. So again, it, that's not the end all be all. There's tons of different stuff that go into it. Uh, but if you're excited for Lucas Patrick, I mean, you, you should be 10 points more excited, 10.1 <laughs> points more excited for this guy. So that gives the, uh, that gives the ability for the bears to move Lucas Patrick to guard if necessary, where he has had a lot of his success um, at like uh, the Packers. He was playing a lot of guard. So it lets the bears be a little more flexible also, he is, like I said, huge, but he's also lean because he's 6'6". Six, six, he wears that weight really well. So he is a he's a big dude, phys- like just very tall, very large, but he's not a fat guy, which is very good to, very good to hear. He defines the athletic and strong build that Poles is looking for. Um, he did play 900 offensive snaps for Seattle last season. Only one penalty, pretty good. I think we're focusing on the guys that get the least amount of penalties here, which I, I think is a big need for us. Two sacks allowed was a strong asset for Russell Wilson. And like I said, he could also play guard. So again, not that these guys are going to be Hall of Fame starters for the Chicago Bears, but it's a step in the right direction to go for a lot of these guys that just won't hold on every play. They won't fall start on every first down and that, you know, forces in a bad situation, kill drives. So that I think that'd be an interesting one for the Bears to pick up. I love that pick because like if you go with a guy that protected Russell Wilson last year in Seattle who had a pretty down year, arguably he was one of Seattle's best linemen and he's still on the market because Seattle had a bad year last year. So you're automatically going to kind of put into the, you know, the bad ring of up. He played for Seattle. Stay away. No, 
He's a very strong guy. And again, the, the size, the age is everything that Poles is looking for. A little taller than what Poles is looking for, which again, I think is nuts. But <laughs> I would love to see this guy come to Chicago. I think he'd be a great asset playing him at guard or center. So, and he's, but he's the size of a tackle, which is even crazier. So my last guy that I'm going to go with, and we're putting him last because the Bears won't sign him unless it's below market value, like crazy amount is J.C. Treader, center from the Cleveland Browns that was recently released that kind of shocked the NFL world. Mm -hmm. He's 31 years old as well. That's another big thing that's hurting him in regards in, in Paul's eyes. Paul's looks at you if you're above 27 and goes, oh, man, you're in a wheelchair now. I don't want you. <laughs> I um, so, yeah, you know, you got to respect that because he wants to build this team right. He wants to build this unit that's going to play hopefully together for a long time, build that chemistry. And he was a lineman himself in the NFL for a year. He was actually picked up undrafted by the Bears, if you didn't know that. Mm -hmm. uh, but Treader is arguably one of the best centers in the NFL. 6'4", 307. So his body type fits perfectly for what Poles is looking for. Super lean, tall, good to go. He's quick and he's tough too. That's everything that you need. He has a 78.7 P uh, grade from PPF, uh, PFF. I'm sorry about that. Um, which is really dang good. Like, I mean, it's better than any grade we've said so far, but we have him last again because of his age hurting him. Also, he was penalized five times, the most penal penalties out of everybody, but that's because he goes after guys. He's not afraid to get in your face. He's not afraid to shove you around. He's not afraid to go at, like Baker Mayfield would get hurt. He'd be like, uh-uh, not today, son. I'm coming after you, you, and you, and I'm going to get penalized for it. But he only allowed one sack, so he's pretty good at protecting the quarterback. And I think his leadership is something that the Bears have needed. As you guys know on this show, I talk a lot about how I felt the Bears were missing a voice because Matt Nagy took that away from his players when he took away the captain status. And he's the, he was the anchor of Cleveland for years, and especially bad years during Cleveland. He's also the NFLPA president, which is obviously a huge thing to have to make sure that everyone around you is happy, so he's going to be able to make a happy locker room. And he brings the mentality, again, that's missing, a leader. And that's what I think that makes him a huge asset for the Chicago Bears. But his age really hurts him. That's why we have him last, because honestly – it's a long shot for him to come to Chicago. But hey, if I do an episode with Tony and it's breaking news, we signed him. You heard it here first. Just want to put yep. that out there. So, Tony, any more comments before we close out? Uh, no, nothing crazy. I do hope we go out and get just just one of these guys because seeing what is it, Willie Willis or whatever is that guy's name is. I don't know if you've seen that picture floating around. He's technically our starting like right guard, starting left guard without Bates. I've never heard of that guy. I'm fully okay full disclaimer i may have been tricked by the internet but it's like a wikipedia or espn thing where it's like here is get you know justin fields off this team free justin fields he's gonna die back there and it's like willie willie willis or something is the right guard or i think you're getting i think you're getting messed i may with have dude. gotten got but everything I else bulldozer would go there right everything else, uh this was this was i think right before he got signed uh but either way i think i may have gotten got but at the same time, it was just such a good name that I thought that it had to be real. And Willie Willis, I don't even yeah, know. I, I, right, I got Ryan Willis, which is our quarterback. No, but that's so. the, yeah, that's a quarterback. All right, I don't know. Well, Tony uh, got tricked and he got it all on camera. I'll do an so update. Nice I'll do an update next uh, next podcast. I'll let you know. <laughs> let you know what I found. Very good. Very good. But that's our four linemen that we would pick up right now. If Ryan Poles were to get someone, because it will impact how the draft goes, Tony, you, did you find out who Willie Wright, with? Willie Wright, that is his name. And he's a I real know. person. He's a real person. He was born September 28th, 1996. That's not true. Actually. I just, the next thing was Ryan Willis. Okay. I don't know who this guy is. When did we sign him? I guess it was uh, February 11th, 2022 is the answer. Um, Probably should have read before asking questions. I don't know. We'll do a, <laughs> a whole episode out of one day. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody. Join alongside Tony Sapito, and we'll see you guys next time.